Good evening. It's so good to be with you again today. Uh, we have several things we want to talk about today from a Christian woman's point of view. And I hope and pray that um, it's encouraging to you that as you, the Lord spoke to me once and he said, if you want to be anointed, speak truth. Well, I know I don't have all truth. None of us do. Right. But I do know the word enough to know a certain amount of discernment and especially being in rescue mission work for a lot of years and just having a lot of years on me, I feel <laughs> like uh, I have a certain amount of discernment. But there are certain things that we need to talk about. And we live in a country where we're free to speak things and to speak our mind. And a lot of that is because we are a Christian nation. It's only Christian societies that are have the liberty and the freedom to speak and, and to have that freedom. They go hand in hand. The blessings that tells us in Deuteronomy 28 that as we serve God in holiness and we do that which is right, the blessings come. And if we do what is wrong, curses come. Amen. I, I know that sounds old fashioned, but hey, it's true. And uh, we could go a long way on that one. But I think we, we decided we wanted to start out and just share the very basics of Christianity because even though you who are listening may understand this, there are many people in our, in our nation who are Christianized, but they just really don't understand what it is to know the risen Christ. And Pearl, tell a little bit about how you went from maybe just being a churchgoer to having more spiritual understanding. Well, I always say it's like fire shut up in your bones. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's one thing to what we call straddle the fence. Mm -hmm. When you're straddling the fence and you are got your life on this part and your life on that part, mm -hmm. you're trying to do both. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a true Christian and a saved, born-again mm -hmm. Christian, you will need to walk only on one side, and that is the side of salvation through Christ. Uh, as long as you're in the world, and you're of the world, basically. Mm -hmm. So from a Christian point of view, you need to, in order to be and gain true salvation and a born-again perspective, uh, pick your sides, <laughs> as we stated before. Amen. And uh, the only way to do that is through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And the obtaining of the Holy Ghost in your life. That's Surrender. True. Surrender. <laughs> and uh, John 3 says it so clearly. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you won't see the kingdom of God. You, mm -hmm. can't, you won't have eyes to see. And it also says the non-spiritual man doesn't understand the word of God. That it takes having a hunger in your heart. And I think one of the things, and I say this because I went to church and didn't really know the Lord until I was 28 years old. But it goes from your head to your heart. Yep. And, and you yep. just realize, uh, I, I need something more. There has to be more to life than what I have right now. And Jesus, cre God created us to have fellowship with him. And when Adam sinned, a death entered in. And that means our, our spirit, it was spiritual death. Mm -hmm. And then when we ask Jesus to forgive us and come into our life, the Holy Spirit comes in and we become alive again spiritually. Right. But, you know, this leads into our first uh, discussion today. And that's this Brittany Maynard, who was a young woman, 29 years old, who wow. had brain cancer and uh, decided she wanted to take her own life. So uh, the Deaths for Dig with Dignity uh, National Center supported this. Hmm. And uh, she went to Oklahoma and uh, with, was euthanized, basically took oh, wow. her own life. And it's so sad to me. I remember back in uh, the early 80s, we had a March for Jesus in Danville and the Right to Life president from Champaign-Urbana came and spoke. And she told about how 1.2 uh, million babies die every year through wow. abortion. But then she said, next on the agenda of the right to die people, will be, or right to choose people will be euthanasia. Well, and here I, it is. Here it is. I didn't and even know what the is. word meant. I had to go home and look it up in the dictionary. But here's this young woman who uh, took her own life uh, because she was afraid of death, probably, or wanted to right. have control over that. 
well, we live in a world where we can't have control of everything. But you read a good... Well, yeah, and in, res in response to what you were saying here, uh, as a Christian, we know that the life doesn't belong to us. No. It's not ours. And she probably chose that way out because she had no hope. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian, that is one of the basis of our faith is hope yes. and the unseen. So, uh, but yeah, to read off of that, I had this story that I found amazing Amen. because I hardly ever have good news. I am so <laughs> glad to have some good news today. Well, a miracle took place. A 40-year-old woman who lives out of Florida uh, died mm -hmm. giving birth to her uh, baby girl. She died and she was dead, uh, now pronounced dead, mm -hmm. for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, her family came in the room, said their goodbyes. The doctors went in to do the final work, and lo and behold, Lazarus. She was born again. She rose from the dead. <laughs> The, the amazing part about this is no brain damage, yes, no amazing. anything, and the doctors, the doctors mm -hmm. are calling it divine providence. Right. Now, how amazing is that? Mm -hmm. Good news. Good news, <laughs> I'll tell you. And even another story that reminds me of, um, my grandson and his wife had a, new, had a baby girl at 23 weeks, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the baby weighed one pound six ounces. Oh my! Well, goodness, anyway, that's small. they're missionaries down in Mexico, and they had everybody across the country praying. And now uh, her name is Ava Joy, and Ava means life. But anyway, she has just in the last two days gained four ounces. So we just know that she's a miracle too. She is a miracle. And, right, and really, when the baby was born, the first night the doctor came in and just said, that's it, you know, she's mm -hmm. gonna die. And uh, they said, no, no, no. And so he said, okay, we'll do what we can. And so but see, but see, they would have let that baby die. But see, doctors mm -hmm. are good at what they do. Mm -hmm. They're trained. They're mm -hmm. professionals, but they're not God. No, they're they not. They can, you know, say, well, the chances of life is this. The mm -hmm. chances of death is this. Exactly. But they can never give you a guarantee. No. no. You know. And it just shows, too, that miracles do happen. That we, we've all seen. So I, there's a, a pastor right here in, in Champaign-Urbana who, this is a year's old, old miracle, but it's a dynamic miracle. And he had club feet where his foot was mm. totally the wrong direction. And he went to a meeting and the Lord straightened that foot supernaturally and he wow. became a minister of the gospel. So he, God yeah, is yeah. a miracle he working has a testimony. God. He has and a testimony. this young lady who uh, survived that ordeal, I want to give her name and I hope I don't yes. mess it up too much, but her name is Ruby Casimoas. Casimo. Mm -hmm. And... She is a living testimony. She is a living. Right now. Yes, and she'll have that, and that baby will have that testimony. Amen, amen. They will glorify <laughs> the Lord. That is wonderful, wonderful. And then what else was it that we were going to talk about? Well, you might have to help me with this. is like a tongue uh, twister to me. Car Carnal. <laughs> Raymond Burke. Well, he had uh, held a position for a very long time on the Vatican's Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Well, it appears that he has been reassigned to another position, the position of patron of honor, which holds no duties, literally. And uh, he is a leading uh, conservative uh, and has been mm -hmm. a, a opposition to Pope Francis uh, regarding the uh, move towards uh, openness to gays and lesbians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, wonder why he got demoted. <laughs> it's, it's just sad, I'll tell you. We uh, Political correctness, you know, it's yeah. just, uh, it's very, very sad. Jerry and I were sitting, we went to a conference this week, and we were sitting over dinner last night, and we said, you know, we would never have believed when we were 28 years old some of the changes that we have seen in our culture. Hmm. We would never, we wouldn't have believed even that abortion would be legal hmm. or that homosexuality would be widespread like this and um, just so well, many different things. That but the amazing part, I understand change, but the amazing part is people like our leaders, like Pope, 
the Pope, the our Pope, Pope right. is leaning towards this. Right. And what Burke was basically saying is you have no authority over mm -hmm. God's more uh, mortality laws right. you, uh, of, over what his word says. You can't change that. No. You no, can't the tell word them is it's the word. right. right. It, exactly. The word is the word. And th the sad thing is the Catholics are the ones that have taken the strong stand on so many social exactly. uh, issues. Basically, so we, yes, they have. We, it's they just, have. it is, it's very sad. But yeah. anyway, it, it, really people say, well, there's always been homosexuality. Well, it's true, there has. Mm -hmm. When it, and I've mentioned this before, but when Israel was taken into the promised land, this paganism all around them was homosexuality yes. and uh, uh T Orgies, uh, temple, you name it. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the temple prostitutes and the yep, this and the yep. that. That was the paganism. Mm -hmm. We're a Christian nation. We right. have Christian principles. And it's only been recently that we've fallen into those things. And I know there's a lot of people that are going to say, oh, you're narrow-minded. But hey, no. I know. I have good friends who were into the homosexual lifestyle who are serving God today. One sin isn't any worse than the other, but hmm. we are not going to call wrong, right? Because God says, turn to me, give me your life, and I will make the crooked path straight. And you know what? That's the only thing that is never changing and always righteous is God's word. Amen. So I, there's no way that mankind, period, can undo God's word no. and make it right. No. But, uh, you know... Speaking of our nation changing in right. such ways, and we allowing those changes mm -hmm. to take place. Another story that I read up, up, uh, upon uh, the Montgomery County School in yes. Maryland. <laughs> yes. Well, they're no longer going to recognize Christian or Jewish holidays mm -hmm. for their children because a Muslim leader said that if you give their, you know, the students uh, holidays, then you have to give our students holidays for our religion. So uh, effective 2015-2016 a, a year, there won't be any holidays. They are going to call it winter break. Yeah. Now, how can we allow <laughs> someone to come into our country and actually dictate to right. us how our school systems are going to be ran? It's, it's just very, very sad. Again, it's our thinking has uh, been taken away from a, a Christian worldview into tolerance. We tolerate everything. Yeah. Well, yes, we can tolerate everything, but not to take away our freedoms. There has to be a line drawn in the sand. Mm -hmm. Another place we need to pray again, and that is, at this point, Canada is probably the only country that's really standing behind Israel at this point. Wow. The United States, mm -hmm. our president, and it's almost like they're blaming Israel for ISIS and the whole Middle East problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, I personally, I'm about ready to go back. Until 1945, our country believed in isolationism as a whole. We're not going to get involved in the wars overseas, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, unless it directly affects us. But I feel like we're just getting over there. And I know a lot of people say, well, we have to fight over there so it doesn't come over here. Well, it's like it's you here. said, it's coming over <laughs> here. It is. Only subversive it's coming over here. Uh -huh. And uh, we better keep our eyes on Jesus because he's our only hope. <laughs> right now he is. And, uh, you know, it says the divide and conquer strategy has worked in so many mm -hmm. uh, ways and it has been demonstrated throughout history. Yeah. Well, we seem to be in that category right now because we're being div uh, divided mm -hmm. and conquer strategy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. as far as Americans mm -hmm. being uh, Christians and Muslims and uh, Hindus, it, it's right. so, uh, and there's no unity. No. So it's right. easy to, to just come right on in here and do whatever you want, right. you know? It's true. And uh, appeasement is another thing. Would you just kind of appease people and that'll make them happy? Well, appeasement never works either. Mm -mm. You know, we either go in there and we're going to win or forget it. If it's not worth going in and fighting and winning, uh, then it's not worth sending our young men in there. Well, Linda, it's inevitable. Yeah. At this point, I really believe that it is mm -hmm. inevitable. There is going to be it, uh, another war. Mm -hmm. yeah, they may call it by another name, right. you know, because uh, to let uh, some people say we, we weren't in the war over there, but we were. 
Yes, you know, our, yes. our young men and women died and some of them are still there. Right. So it's, it's just never ending story, you know. It's true. And until we rectify this problem it, with right. a permanent situation, yes. solution, right. it's going to be ongoing anyway. It is. Well, we just need to pray. There's just wars and there's unjust wars, and we need to just pray that our leadership will pray and really seek God on what they're to do mm -hmm. and trust that they have the wisdom and the judgment that will keep our nation free. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And meanwhile, we do live in the greatest country there ever was with some of the greatest people there ever is. And I don't blame people for wanting to sneak in and be a part of our nation. You know, I don't blame them one bit. Yeah, we do have a good thing we going here. We have a good thing going here, and we want to keep it that way. Amen. Okay, well, let's see. What else is there? Oh, I do want to invite people to the Festival of Trees in Danville coming up this weekend. That um, It's going to be a fun time. Uh, we have a tree there. Uh, we didn't purchase a tree as a rescue mission because it cost quite a bit to have a tree. But our auxiliary did go in and decorate a tree. And so as you walk around all these gorgeous, gorgeous trees, I think you will find our tree because it is titled... A king is born. Wow. And we have little uh, ornaments that say joy, peace, a king is born with a nativity scene. And uh, I went last year and I looked and looked and looked for something about Jesus to celebrate his birthday. And I had trouble finding it. So I asked the Lord this year, next year, I want to see you lifted up at that Festival of Trees. Amen. So, so um, did you do the decorating well, yourself? Um, a dear friend of mine, I'm a Jean Wright, helped and oh, she did okay. a lot. She does real fancy scrapbooking and all this and that. So she handmade a lot of the ornaments. And then we just put it together. Well, I'm going to get out there and you take it. You do. I, yes. I and it's a, fun, it's a beautiful get festival. A look at it. Yes. And they do fundraise for the community. It's a great group of people there in Danville that put that on. Yeah. Well, I always have at this point in our show some type of uh, inspirational okay, theme good. to say. Good. And I would like to put this message out to our men, our young black yeah. men. I will say this, your children, your mothers, and you know, your country needs you. Mm -hmm. And we need you to step forth as men to be our spiritual leaders because we're losing the battle in such a way that uh, you seem to have dropped in the ball. And I just want to encourage you to pick up the ball, be a leader for your sons yes. and your daughters to show that your love for your God is here also in your country. That's very yeah. true. It's yeah. very true. And if uh, uh, people are looking for a cause, uh, that's why they're going over there to fight for ISIS. It's mm -hmm. a cause. But I would agree with young black men and white men, mm -hmm. uh, you young people, because revival so often starts with young people. Just get into the Word. Give your life to the Lord, and Amen. you can be a world changer. You can bring this nation back to God, and you can be blessed. Yes. Be blessed. Yes, be blessed and yes. bless others. And bless because others. Because there's so much raw talent out here and so much, you know, potential that hasn't been tapped into as far as our young men are concerned. You know, we need you. You know, step it's, forth and, you know, be uh, what your your country needs you to be yes. and your families need you to be. It, that you know? is the yeah. truth. That is the truth. Um, so, you know, we have the Sunday morning, we had a wonderful service. Four, young, four men there in the mission went forward and committed their lives to the Amen. Lord. Amen. Yes, it wow, was wonderful. Wow, that's great. But we had a prophetic word, too, and it was just short. Uh, with God, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. And so any of you that are watching today, you may be in a situation where you say, this situation is impossible that I'm in. You may be lonely. You may, who knows what your problem is, but you may be, have an addiction. Hmm. But nothing is impossible with God, and He has your best interest mm -hmm. at, and at heart. Amen. If you just would come, surrender, that's the word, that's isn't it? That's the word. If you surrender yourself in that situation to him mm -hmm. uh, and, and be patient and listen and, and pay attention to what he might speak to your heart. Yes. He can bring you out of any situation that's and true. give you peace in the midst of that situation. Right. Yeah, I've always said, you know what? You've tried it everybody else's way. You tried it your way. <laughs> How about trying it Jesus' way? You Amen. know, just give him a try yes. and, you know, see how your life turned out. That is you know? the truth. Yeah. That is the truth. 
Yeah. Well, we're getting ready for the holidays. Uh, what are you going to do special for Thanksgiving? Well, I always look forward to this time of year. I get to spend a lot of time with my grandchildren, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I love them to death, and, and I'm looking forward to that, you know, and the turkey. And I'm at the point now where I don't have to do the cooking, so it's <laughs> always really good to go home, and everything is done for you when you get there. So wow. I'm looking forward to it. Looking and, you know, the Christmas time is oh, it's just beautiful. It, I love it. I love it. That's the truth. I love it, it really is. Well, we're getting ready for um, several different groups when they come in and help with Thanksgiving at the Mission, which is a blessing to us. Mm -hmm. And we have a large crowd that comes in just to eat that don't stay all night. And so it's going to be fun, and we'll probably have some special activities as and well. Is as that going to be on Thursday, Thanksgiving well, Day? It, and right before and after, you know, during that season, uh -huh. we'll have different things come in that will be will be really nice. But yeah. and then Thanksgiving Day too, of course. But uh, it's it's going to be a busy holiday for us. And well, I know we're going to be. My church um, mm -hmm. is going to be taking. Um, Thanksgiving dinner, Thanksgiving dinners yes. to the uh, sick and shed in. That's good. So yeah. that's part of our ministry. Every year, I believe we do it at Carter Metropolitan CME Church. Yes, that's what yes. we do. So that's something to look forward to. I'll tell you, where would we be without all the churches doing so many different things? I think sometimes. Oh, that's one thing we heard at this conference that not only is our nation getting anti-Christian, but they're also getting anti-church. And yes. when, when you think of all the work that the churches do, even in just reaching out to the youth or to, like you said, preparing food baskets and visiting the shed. And I know your husband is excellent. You yes. told me how good he is yes. about visiting Safe the shed ins shed -ins. and going to the jail. Yeah. And he just oh, really mm -hmm. does a superb job as a pastor. But where would our nation be without the servants of the Lord that go out and do these things. Well, actually, with all the things that's going on at this time in the world, without the Christians who are uh, serving and giving of themselves and their finances, we would be in a bad spot right now mm -hmm. because we really need each other. It's true. You know, it's a lot of things going on where people are sick, mm -hmm. uh, people are you know, living in poverty. Yes, <laughs> we yes. can't pretend it's not oh, there. That's true. We have a lot of drug addiction and you know alcoholism. Right. So we, they need us, they, and so yes. often people turn blind eye to people when they are in that situation. So right. it's right. people like our churches and you mm -hmm. know your mission that keeps mm -hmm. the door open and keeps the love flowing. So it's, that's a great thing. It's true. It, it's needed. And uh, the poverty level in Danville is pretty high, you know, mm. considering all the cities. And I was pleased to see in the paper where we did win an award as being one of the most veteran friendly. Did you see that? I didn't see uh, cities that. in the uh, country. Yeah, I heard the, the wall, the Vietnam Wall, was was uh, here in Danville was, you know, mm -hmm. for and, a short period of time. Well. It, that's true. And then uh, just with the VA hospital there, you know, we just have a lot of veterans that come and visit for the hospital. So I don't know what they really judged it on. We have that museum, too. We sure do. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. at least when we think of all the wars and the Bible says that the last days there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Yeah. So we need to support our military through prayer and through encouragement and I know they probably, these young men, I know they go over there and they aren't allowed to be on the offensive so often and it mm -hmm. hurts them and they have dis trouble discerning, I'm sure, in right. a lot of ways. But, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, it doesn't matter. They're being faithful to their leadership and to their country mm -hmm. and uh, God, uh, he understands that we need soldiers to, for protection yeah, we do need soldiers. and we need to honor these young men. Well, we just have a few minutes left. Um, is there anything else special you'd like to mention today? Well, I just wanted to say that, you know what, with the holidays coming up, I just look forward to spending more time in God's work, you know, yes. because this is a time of the season mm -hmm. of giving, as they That's say, true. you know, and you give of yourself and you give of your finances, your time. Right. And this is the time when a lot of people are sad, That's Linda. True. That's they're true. sad or they're uh, mm -hmm. in a situation where they don't feel love. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say right now, the invitation, you know, to mm -hmm. the mission. Right yes. now, uh, you're welcome. Right. The invitation to Thanksgiving dinner. The doors are open at Danville Mission. It's so true. So feel yes. welcome. <laughs> right. At 4 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day, if you haven't 
don't have any place to go, come on over. And it's really, it's a very clean, the food's good. Oh, yeah, and it's it like is. being in a restaurant, it really is. <laughs> yeah. I think partly that's why we have such a big crowd sometimes. But um, do come and feel welcome. You can help serve. Uh, we always can use help in that respect. So just get a hold of, of us at the office and come and be a part of that. That would be yes. wonderful. And I encourage you to, to find a little church that you can become part of that church family mm -hmm. and get involved. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. We, mm -hmm. we, we want to be blessed. We be a blessing. It's just you do for others and it comes back to you. It's right. just how it, it works. It goes hand in yes. hand. That's exactly well, how it works. Well, let's just pray for the people that are watching. And Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence in this room right now, yes, Lord God. Jesus. We just lift up your word, lift up your ministry. Lord Heavenly Father, yes. we pray that for every ear that hears this message may come closer to you. Yes, Lord, we're waiting on you. You said, yes. knock and the door shall be open. Yes. You said, ask and you shall receive. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we're asking you to cover our soldiers. Yes. We're asking you to yes. cover our country. Yes. We're asking you to cover this ministry. Yes. And we just give you all the praises and all the glory yes. in the marvelous name of Jesus the yes. Christ. Amen. Father, I just pray in agreement with that, and I pray that all the women listening will understand that you love them and that you need them, Lord, to reach out to those around them, that they will remember that you can work through them, that as they just reach out a helping hand to their neighbor, to their family, to their husbands, mm -hmm. that, Lord, you will bless them and be that you will be blessed by their service to you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.